Hey YouTube, this is Prince from Desi Programmer. Welcome back to another exciting video. And in this video, we are going to talk more about Flutter. Eventually, in this video, we are actually going to talk about Hive, which obviously brings us to the question, what is Hive? Well, according to the publishers, Hive is a lightweight and blazing fast key value database written purely in Dart that's also encrypted strongly using AES-256 encryption. Well, in simple words, Hive is a fast and secure no SQL database which can be used as an alternative to SQLite for storing data which will be persistent throughout our application. So let's talk more about Hive and let's write some code using Hive and Flutter. Before we move any forward, let's talk about mem.dev, a website that helps you master your skills using the power of a space repetition technique. Let me show you how this works. Most of the time, as a developer, we do Google things. For example, let's say I just forgot how to push a git repository to master branch. I say git push to master. As soon as I complete this Google search, I get too many results. Most of the time, I may go to the stake overflow result. And here, it just said, hey, git push origin and then just your master branch. Now, I can use mem.dev to, to save this information and later I can use simple training to master this simple code. For example, here is this code. I can even use this simple extension and after creating, I can convert this to a flashcard. Here in the flashcard, I will just simply put it as a code and this is the thing that I want to remember. So I'll just click on this add button. Here I'm saying I just learned how to, how do I push a local gate. You can edit it as you want. Let's click on save. After saving, you can just go to training and start training. And here when you click on start training, you have to write that code that you just saved. So using this, you can remember and master anything that you have to Google again and again. You can click on the link given below in the description to buy your own subscription using which you can get twice the time of free trial. And also I may get some percentage if you do a purchase. So I actually already had a video on SQLite and how you can use SQLite using Flutter to store data and retrieve data. And a couple of you were asking that, hey, is there any alternative SQLite? Well, obviously, there are many alternatives to SQLite. And one of them is Hive, which is actually very competitive to SQLite as it is fast and also it's a no SQL database. But not just that. Actually, I have seen that putting data and retrieving, retrieving data from a Hive database, which actually is a box, is far easier than doing the same thing with SQLite, which is why I thought that it will be better to share this thing with you guys. So that if you have to store some persistent data for your application, then instead of using some giant SQLite code base, you can even use Hive, which will do the same, but with very less amount of code and even is very fast. Which obviously brings us to the first question of, hey, how do we set up? Now the setup is quite easy. You have to just install these three plugins. One is Hive, second one is Hive Flutter, and then Path Provider, and just save it. Use Flutter Pub Get, and even if and you will have all the necessary things for writing code. Then, as you can see in my main dot dot, I have these four buttons that says put data, get data, update data, delete data, and there are these four functions which obviously contain no code. I've just coded them. Now let's see how we can set up our Hive. So since we have installed all the plugin, we have to first import them which means we have to first import hive.dart, pathprovider.dart, and then we need hiveflutter.dart. Remember, my project name right now is Flutter Hive, but we need Hive Flutter, not Flutter Hive. So yes, after this, we have to initialize Hive Flutter. That we will do in our main function itself. So I say await hive.init flutter. Now, since we have added await, the function should be async, which means I have to add an async keyword right here. Now we have initialized flutter that is a high flutter. Now here in our visit where we have to use this, we have to write some more code where we can open a database and simply in hive, a database is a box. Now a box is simply a data storage unit in hive. It is kind of an SQL table, but it has no structure. It can contain anything. So for a small app, like right now, we'll be using only a single box, but for more advanced application and for more complex data, you can use multiple boxes if you want. So now to open a box, I first, I will first name a variable. Let me just name the variable as box itself. And here in the init state itself, we have to write some code, which will be init state. And in the init state, I'm calling this function named as open box. Now this open box function does not exist, so we have to code it. And this function will return a future value. We have named it as open box and it's asynchronous. Now here in this function, first of all, we need to get the document directory, which is our application document directory for which we have installed path provider. So I have to say await get 
application directory i hope i just get auto suggestion application document directory cool then we have to initialize hive so we have say hive dot init and we have to init in this directory's path and then we need to open a box now we have to say this box is equal to await hive dot open box and there the box name that you want let's say i will say te test box so since we are opening a box for the first time we will use hive dot open box if you have a box already if you know that a box is open you can just use hive dot box to catch a box a single instance then i'm saying okay return so this will open a box for me which is named as text box now let's talk about inserting some data now inserting data in a box is actually very simple so we have this put data function where we can put some data to put some data i have to just call my box and then i can use the put function to insert some data now here is the thing we can insert any valid dart type object in our hive data for example if i want to insert a name i can use the key name and then a value let's say prince now this value can be a single in a string an integer a boolean value a list or even a map anything that you want you can even code your own custom type adapters to insert val insert data which will be more organized but right now let's keep it simple so that we can understand the code to the basic part so yeah i am saying put some data where the key is name and the value is prince now this is an example of putting data as a key value pair which is obviously p a i r not p a r e now if you want you can even use auto increment kind of fields to insert data and retrieve data now what this means is that sometimes we have to put data in this key value pairs for example you have a user you put the key as user you put the value but sometimes we have to put data which will be auto incremented like you just want to insert insert you don't care about the key you just care about the value for example a simple to do app in that case you have to do box dot add and then you can add a value and here when you add a value you don't need a key you just need the value so here i'm saying box dot put name that sprints and box dot add value now let me just comment out the add portion right now i'm just trying to insert a value with a key so now when we click on this put data it will eventually put this data for me and this method by the way returns a future and and when we get a future that means the process has completed now getting data is also pretty simple okay this is get all we want to get some data now to get some data all that we have to do is to say box dot get and then the key of the a data now here if the key exists then we will get the value of that key and if the key doesn't exist then we will get a null value so here i'm saying box dot get name and let me just print this value that's box dot get so i have say print and print the value that comes from this data let's save it so let me first click on put data or let me first so pay close attention to the console i say get data and it says null because no data exist and when i click on put data we actually insert a data and now when i click on get data it gives out prints which obviously we inserted right now so very simple right let's move bit forward and let's talk about updating data and updating data too is pretty simple all that we have to do is to use the same key that we used to insert the data and retrieve the data and then we can just put a new value let's say they see programmer and now when we save this then eventually it will update the data from prince to desi programmer which means if i click on the update button it will update the data when i click on get data now we get desi programmer when i click on put data now when i click on get data we get prince so very simple deleting is also again very simple all that we have to do is to say box dot delete and then the key of the data that we want to delete so i'm saying name let's save it now again let's pay some close attention to the console i say put data i say get data i get prints i say update data i say get data again i get desi programmer i say delete data and now i'm saying get data it gives me null which means the data has been deleted so this is all about inserting data with key and value pair we got some data we inserted in some data and we got some data 
we updated them and we even deleted them now let's talk about getting all the data well obviously the how hive documentation if you visit is pretty amazing you get a lot of thing from there but still a couple of things are missing like how do we get all the data from any box for example let's say if it isn't to do application or let's say a contact application then you want to get all the data at once now actually that too is pretty simple if you just do do a little bit of google searches and write some bit code then you will see that you can actually use box dot to map method to get all the values as a map so here if i say something like print and i have to print the value from box dot map now let's pay close attention to the console and here when i click on get data obviously we get a single data i need to call get all so let me just insert a new button now obviously when i click on get all you will see that I get an empty list obviously because I have not inserted any data. So let's click on put data and now click on get data. Then you see, okay, you see we get this map which has a key of name and a value of prints. So eventually I can use the put function to put multiple values and it will eventually give me out all the values. For example, let me just say name and another key name one, which will be let's say prints one. Let's save this. Let's put this data and let's click on get all data and you will see here we have name prints and name one prints one so now you have a you have the entire value as a map you can convert it to a list and use it as you want let's talk about the increment kind of value where you just care about the value not about the key because that too is going to be the case now in those cases let me just comment this out all that you have to do you have to just use the box dot add and then prevent and then just put your value so here i say box dot add value so when i click on put data i obviously get the value now to understand how to get update and delete that value you have to first click on get all and here you will see that you see um that the index is zero for that value and then we have our other values which is name and name one so when i say get zero you will get this value but I, ha I don't have to say get with a key of zero i have to say get at any yani we have to say get index at zero so you have to get if i have to get the data i have to say something like print box dot get at and then the index that's zero right now now when i save this and when i click on get data it will give me the value in the same way if i have to update i have to just put um, the value with that index of zero so if i say put at the zeroth index this value so let's say that i want to say update let me click on get all then now you see at the zeroth index we have desi programmer in the same way i can even delete at the zeroth index so if i just keep using the add method then it will keep adding the value as an index of zero one two three four five so and if you use the key value pair then you will get the key value pair kind of data and this is how the data is organized in a simple hive box now obviously you would have seen that inserting data retrieving data updating data and deleting data using a hive box is actually far simpler than using an sqlite and this is true which brings us to the question should you use hive or should you use sqlite now first of all there are many other alternatives to storing persistent data in your application other than hive and sqlite you have shared preferences and there are a couple of more i will just link them in the description now you should use Hive if you have to store very simple data like use and profile kind of some messages, some sort, some shopping cart content, some product categories and all. But if you have to use more complex data, which actually has more complex relations with each other, then I should say that you should go with SQLite. And obviously, most of the time your apps won't have some more complex data to be stored in their own database. So most of the time you can use Hive. But again, if you have to use some complex relation, then I suggest you should go with SQLite. Well, that's pretty much it from my side in this video. I'll catch up soon in the next video talking more about Flutter coding and whatnot.